Greetings, indie racing fans. Oh, wait, no, that's a totally different thing. Indie gaming fans who also like racing games. There we go. I'm the ex-hardcore gamer, and today I'm going to talk about Pinchcliffe Grand Prix. For those of you that may be confused, yes, there is an alternate title that is more traditional in the original Norwegian language, but I'm going to stick with the English language version just because it's going to make things a lot easier, and I don't want to butcher a name. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and think that you watching the video at home right now are going to be like myself and have never heard of the movie that this game is based on, especially if you're from the United States. Things may be a bit different though if you are from Europe because this is the highest grossing movie to ever come out of Norway and it came out all the way back in 1975. There is an English dub that was created in the United Kingdom, so I feel like that that may be a big market there as well. It used stop motion animation that's very similar to the Rankin and Bass Christmas specials that we get here in the United States, and the plot itself is more similar to the Wacky Races series that you may remember with Dick Dastardly and Penelope Pitstop. And the similarities don't end there, as in 2000 there was a Dreamcast game released for Wacky Races, and also a Pinchcliffe Grand Prix game on PC, of which this is an updated version of. So based on the name, and looking at it initially, you may think that this is going to be a racing game like Mario Kart or any other cartoon mascot based racing game, but you'd actually be wrong as there's a lot more to it than that. While you can start off by playing some practice and tutorial races, for the most part you're going to be playing the game Story Mode, which has you play through and unlock various mini games that need to be completed to be able to do some further racing. This is almost like being told that you need to complete multiple games of Mario Party before actually being able to play Mario Kart. Kind of strange, especially when you think about what this would have felt like back all the way in 2000. Unfortunately, unlike Mario Party, there aren't that many minigames to play, and they're not all that deep and worth really playing over and over again. They do get kind of stale pretty quickly. You'll have some basic minigames like solving jigsaw puzzles and the cup game where you have to watch the ball closely to choose which cup it's under, and then things get a little bit more advanced where it's kind of a Pac-Man clone, and then another one where you're flying around like pilot wings and popping balloons. But for the most part, they don't really feel fully fleshed out and kind of get boring really quickly, even without having much of a challenge. So as I mentioned before, there is a story mode which has you go through the plot of the movie, and it plays almost like a mix between a point-and-click adventure game and one of those hidden object games. It's going to be a mix of you watching clips that are actually from the movie, or just going through and having animations from the game engine, as you walk around and just find objects which help you unlock more mini-games, or more parts to the car which you're trying to build. Thankfully, you don't have to find every single part of the car before it lets you do the racing portion of the game, but you do have to find quite a bit of them, and you're going to be probably playing for a good 2-3 to three hours of this story mode. The mini-games can be played on their own, and you can try to beat your high scores or unlock more parts, but obviously the real bread and butter is going to be in the racing, which can be played 1 or 2 player. Unfortunately, this will be two-player local split-screen only as there is no online play. You don't even need every finger on one hand to count all of the modes that you can play while racing, and there are only 11 tracks, so this is something that is going to get pretty old rather quickly, and I think it's really going to only be appealing to the fans of the movie itself and not really much to other gaming fans. The controls themselves do still feel like they're straight out of 2000, where it feels like a digital control for your steering, even if you're using a modern controller with analog sticks. I constantly found myself in a situation where it was all or nothing when it came to both steering as well as braking and gas, so I would constantly be hitting walls, spinning out and going in the wrong direction, or just really not taking the turn the way that I thought that I would, even after I had played for a few hours. I also feel like most of the minigames themselves were also designed with a mouse in mind or maybe a basic keyboard to play it, because when using the controller they just don't feel right and control very awkwardly. I found myself just going to the mouse and just putting my controller down unless I was doing the racing. So yes, the graphics have been improved since the original 2000 release, but do not expect too much of a makeover in that department. The character models are all very basic, and while they do try to match the style of the movie as best they can, there's not a whole lot of detail to them, and even in 2000 I don't think it would have been that great. Here in 2021 it really just falls flat. The tracks themselves have a very low polygon look to them, and even crowds will not even animate, they're just flat backgrounds. It does, though, have some more modern updates such as being able to play in higher resolutions and higher frame rates, so I do have to give it that, 
but obviously with how basic everything is, it's going to have no trouble running it on your hardware. Having never seen the original movie myself, I can't talk about how accurate the music may be, but it certainly sounds like something that would have been taken directly from the feature film. The clips from the movie, as well as the sections from the story mode that are fully voiced over, sound like they would also be directly taken from the movie, but again, I can't confirm that. I really do have to question who the audience is for this game, as it's a barely updated version of a game made all the way back in the year 2000, based on a movie made all the way back in 1975. It's also a movie that in the United States is not available on DVD or Blu-ray, and is not currently on any of the streaming services. If you do happen to be a fan of Pinchcliffe Grand Prix or any of the other names that it may be known as, then maybe this will be a good game for you as it'll be a nice trip down memory lane with some of your favorite characters. But what I imagine for most people People, this will just be a totally absurd, unknown property with a barely passable game that wasn't going to be even that great back in 2000. I would find this game hard to recommend at any price, but the fact that they're also looking to charge $35 makes it even harder to recommend and really has to be for diehards only. <laughs> And on that note, I'd like to thank our diehard fans of I Dream of Indy, which we call the Indie Warriors. Bill T, Christian Cruz, Kevolo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C Coil, Skeptism, Holly, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRS the Eighth, Ray Lynn, and Marky e. Mint. Thank you again for all your love and support for us here at I Dream of Indy. If anybody else would like to become an Indie Warrior, all the information is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, enjoy gaming.